Welcome back to Data to Decisions. In today's video, we'll be building this interactive visual, which is going to give you the weekly schedule. By clicking on the week number out of the 18 weeks, you will immediately see instantly dynamic creation of the schedule with all the logos for the different teams and the win-loss record and everything. So everything is going to be dynamic and we'll be doing it with some simple Excel techniques. Let's get started. So in order to create this visual, we need the, these specific sets of data, which we covered in the previous video. So the first thing is we have a list of all the games in the schedule we created in, in a previous video. And then we have the standings table, which provides for each team, what is their win-loss record information. So basically, this is what is going to be used for creating our visual. So let's go to an empty sheet and start creating the visuals that we want to enable the user select um, a specific week number and we want them to be able to see that week specific schedule of games okay so what i'm going to first do is to this is uh, i'll rename the sheet as weekly schedule or week schedule and then i'm going to have a helper sheet or help sheet where first I want to list all the, the number of weeks. So 18 rows, one column, it gives me this. And I want to build a pivot table on this. So I'll build a pivot table. Uh, maybe I'll put it in the same sheet. And here, um, I don't have a, the name of this table. So if I drag this in, it's not going to work, so I will have to redo this. So go back to the pivot table, change your data source, and start from here. So if I had done that correctly in the first step, it would have saved me this rework. But basically, you need a the, the name of the column and then 18 weeks. And so I have created a pivot table out of that, and then we do a slicer. We have kind of walked through this approach in a previous video about how to build interactive uh, visuals based on slicers. So that's why I'm kind of going faster on this. We'll put a link to the more detailed, uh, elaborate video on this topic. So I have now created a slicer. The slicer, when you click on it, it always, the first row value will be here in 26. So I'm going to click on this cell. Um, again, where you do in this, in the workbook, which column, it doesn't matter. But wherever you put the pivot table, make sure you name that. So instead of E26, I'm going to call it V selected. Okay. And you can call it according to your preferences. I'm calling it week selected. So now let's check this. Let's go back to the week schedule. And um, let's bring our slicer. Cut. Uh, I'm going to. I selected it and I pressed Control X to cut the slicer, and then I will go here and then Control V to paste it. So now I have the slicer, and I can change. Uh, I want it to have nine columns and two rows because there are 18 uh, weeks of NFL regular season. So I'm gonna. Now we have a slicer. Now what I'm going to do is I. If you remember, we named it as week selected, right? So equals week selected. We want to see if it's working. So if I click two, it should be two. So now I know which week the user is selecting. This is great. Now let's start building the formula. So we don't need to show this week. I'm deleting that value there. But now first thing, let's do um, which team is the away team, right? We are going to have uh, every week we may have 13 games, 16 games, 15 games. We don't know. I think the maximum will be 16, but it can be fewer too. So we need to build this, keeping in mind that there will be 16 possible rows of data, 16 possible games in every single week. So if I'm going to just name it as there's an away team, there's going to be a home team, and then we will build a logo for the home and away team here. And then we will show the record of the two teams playing. Okay, so this is what we want to do. The first thing is away team. Let's understand first the data that we have in the games table, right? So I go to the games table. 
in the games table, if I want to bring a specific set of rows where the week is um, uh, equal to the week selected. So the week column is actually labeled here as attribute in the games table. I think that was a miss on my part. I should have named it as week. It's basically the week number and it should be uh, a numeric value and it looks like it is a text value. So the first thing I'm going to do is to, before I write the formula, let me go into the games table, right? So go and edit. And I want to make sure that it is in a new uh, numeric column because that's the right way to do it because it's a number and I'm just going to make it change type as a whole number and I will also rename it as V. Okay. So this is the list of all games. So I'm going to again do close and load. So this will apply the changes we have made and now we will have the V. So as it's loading, the concept that we're trying to apply here is when the user selects the slicer, let's say they selects week one, the week selected value will become one. And now I want to take that and apply it to filter this table and say, where the week equals the week selected, give me all the rows of data, because those are the games that are played in that week. Pretty straightforward. So let's apply that approach. Now it's applied the name change the week and it's a number now everything is good so go back filter the games table um so if i take the entire games table i only want the away team right so which is the away team so the away team is games away team and can i get um specifically the rows where so the games week equals the week selected right so the value that we already saved so let's see what happens here so what i'm saying is give me the away team value where the week equals week selected okay so it automatically gives me all the away teams during that week and there are 16 games so let's click on another random thing so now i get 19 values that doesn't make sense. Why would I get 19? And that's because there are three teams, or there are actually two teams having buy, three, four, five teams having buys during that. Uh, there are 14 teams playing, but this doesn't make sense. In the sense that the buy entries should not be coming in here because that increases the number beyond what is possible. So what I need to do is to make sure that the buy values are excluded. So I go back to my filter and this time I will close, open and close for the game week equals week selected. And then I will multiply open parenthesis games away team, right? Um, not equals to buy, okay? Uh, the important thing here is that we are putting two conditions and we want both to be satisfied. So I'm putting an asterisk or so I'm making sure that both are um, true. Only then give me the value. So I will close my filter function and enter. Now I get a lot fewer records. So this is 13 games in that week. So 13 games and then we have... Um, Let's say next time in week eight, we have 16 games and then we have 15 games and so on. So basically we're able to get the away team. And so I can apply the same logic to get, um, you know, from for the home as well. So I can take this, copy it, go in here. And then in this case, I want instead of the away team, I want the home team hit okay so now i have the two away and home team lists the next thing is i want to get the logo so we already learned how to get the logo from a grid structure so i'm going to try to steal that formula which we had here and copy it and if you want to know more about that specific formula please check out the previous video which we uh, explained everything in detail in that video so i'm going to paste the formula here and immediately everything is wrong because we're just pasting in exactly the same formula from the other sheet. We have to modify it. 
Will we have a buy now? Because we already removed the buy, so I don't expect the buys to come up in this data. So I'm going to remove that portion of the formula, which is not relevant. The important thing here is the image URL. And then within the image URL, we want to make sure we pass this um, abbreviation for the team. So I've done it. I'm not going to change anything else. It's just 11. And it says there is a typo. And the typo was because there was an extra uh, close parenthesis. So that got removed. Um, so that's clean. So if I go ahead and do this, um, this is a dynamic array. So I can change the D11 to D11 hash and it will automatically put the formulas too. So I can take the same thing, copy, go into here, paste. And this time, instead of D11, I want to take it from G, which is the home team. And there we have it. So we have now the logos automatically done with a single formula. Great. So now we have the logos here, logos there. Um, actually, it should have the record. I should put the logos there. Sorry about that. So I'm going to copy, put the logo there, and I will remove it from here. Now, to finish it up, we need the um, Records can be pulled from a simple X lookup function where I can take the abbreviation from the home, go into the standings table, and look up the team abbreviation column, comma, and bring back the record. So, what is the record? Um, so, they have winning percentage. They So, they don't have the record. So, I'm just going to use the win columns. Okay. And then bring me. Um, do an ampersand, double quotes, hyphen, double quotes, ampersand, and then bring back the losses column. Okay, so we can do that too easily. And then I'm going to close parenthesis and okay. So now I get the record for the Los Angeles Rams. So here I can also go and uh, instead of G11, if I do G11 hash. Now this will do a dynamic array, so I don't have to worry about how many games. So that's the nice thing about the dynamic arrays, because in seventh week, we only have these many games. In sixth, we have more. In eighth, we have more. So when it expands, these formulas automatically expands, and we don't have to do any extra work to clean it up. Same thing, just like we did the record for the home team, I can use copy the formula and paste it here doesn't work because I need to point it to the away team um, you know, abbreviation. So I click on D11, put a hash, that gives me this. So let's go and check again. This is G11 pointing to the home team. This one is pointing to the away team. So now we have everything. We can do a versus if I want. Uh, and again, the rest of the stuff is all just formatting how you want to format this. So you always going to maximum is 16 games. So I want to make sure that, um, you know, um, I accommodate. So in this case, for example, there are 16 games in week eight. So this is the maximum it's going to have. So I can just write like this and then maybe, you know, make it a little bit taller. Uh, and then I can do some conditional formatting. So for example, I'm going to select all these and then I will do, um, Go to conditional formatting, new rule. And if I wanted like a banded um, rows kind of design, I can do is even row of C11 first, um, the beginning of this um, schedule. So if that is an even row, then you do a different formatting. So maybe I'll do a pattern with this and hit OK, OK. I'm missing something here. Oh, yeah, I need to put another close parenthesis. There you have it. So now you have a, and if I don't need this, I can put it up. There we go. So an interactive slicer, which you can use to bring the schedule dynamically along with the logo. We also did a lookup to pull the record, um, win loss record for the team, right? So, and again, if you don't need to show this, um, you can do it. Or um, I remember that one of the things we could do is I can insert a row, um, column here and make that at symbol, right? So I can do a if 
there is a team here, right? If it's blank, leave it blank. Otherwise, put the at symbol, okay? And I can do it with hash. That is dynamic too. So now I can uh, center this and I don't need it to be this wide. So I can make it maybe three or something like that. And these two need to be centered. Okay, so there you have it. So these are very simple techniques that we used um, in this case. Let's see. I'm not sure whether the images are coming through in the same size. That's what I'm checking. So let's put uh, seven as the width and we can play with the row height here. So let's say make it 30. So this makes it a lot bigger. Again, depends on the purpose of how you're gonna use it. If I'm gonna go into full screen mode, I can now um, see, for example, the logos much more clearly. There you have it. Very simple techniques. We can create these type of interactive visuals, dynamic visuals, um, using some very simple Excel techniques. Hopefully this is helpful. Um, if you have any suggestions, please let me know in the comment section. I look forward to hearing from you. I'll see you soon in another video. Thank you so much for watching.